Seriously, this lettuce died just so that you could be a vegetarian. Have a heart, eat a rock, you heartless savages. Welcome to the Green Plumbing Designer Certificate Program. It's a joint venture between ASPE and IATMO, and now you as well. This is my contact info. You can use it. Use it uh, judiciously, uh, but use it if you need it. We'll look at a few green building programs. There are others. We're just going to pick out a few. There are more added all the time. We can't cover everything. We'll look at a, a few green building programs, though, but uh, we'll explore the whole building approach. Every aspect of the project wants to be coordinated and complementary and supplementary to the other aspects of the project. So we can work together. In some ways, Estadama can serve as a lesson to us. Uh, they express it pretty eloquently. It's based on four pillars that are embedded in the culture of the Arab world. Economy, environment, society, and culture. And this somewhat mimics our whole building approach. Same kind of concept. Economy, ecology, equity. Balancing economy, ecology, and equity is a typical definition of sustainability. Again, this is also similar to the Estadama concept. We also refer to this as the triple bottom line. These are all core philosophies that make it happen. Economy, society, environment, not in any particular order. Can mix them up. Rotate them. Certification should not be our only goal and purpose for designing sustainable buildings, but sometimes the client and or the project specifics may require that these cert certifications become at least one of the major primary concerns of the building design. Some clients are looking for all the benefits of green, while others just want to be able to show that they are green and we can get an infinite array in between. To build green or not is not entirely our decision. Regardless of the origin of the motivation to build green, we still have an obligation to deploy appropriate technologies for the specific project and to ensure that these systems are as efficient as possible beyond satisfying the desire to achieve the maximum certification points unless of course that is what the client wants. It's their project not ours. But be consultive. Help them to discover what they really want or what they really need. They may not know. These goals don't always work together. What can we do to integrate all of our systems for maximum benefit? This is why the green plumbing designer engineer needs to be involved in the project from an early point in the process. We can offer counsel to the client to help them sort through design options so that the project will at least have a chance, some chance at least, of meeting their goals and expectations at least from our perspective. This is part of the whole building approach I've been talking about. It's also called the integrated design approach. The primary promise of the whole building approach strategy comes from the fact that it both encourages and guides a collaborative and integrated design and construction process. This can have many benefits to the owner.
this type of strategy can have numerous benefits to the owner by focusing on sustainability and balancing these considerations, providing a life cycle cost benefit to the owner. There may be a first construction premium for a green certified building, but the benefits can pay for themselves many times over. Water systems are something that people don't seem to appreciate. Some people don't see water systems as systems that have any ROI potential. This could be true for some applications, but not necessarily inevitable. As with all of our work, design strategies need to be considered carefully and weighed with the other considerations to best suit the needs of the client and the project. This applies to alternative water systems as well as every other system within the building and outside of the building. This is how water might be used in a typical commercial building. The next slide will bake it into a pie chart. You're really going to be eating any pie. In this case, we see the plumbing fixtures, irrigation, and heating and cooling are all somewhat about equal. This can vary tremendously from project to project and depending on the location and so forth. And if we add one pass cooling to the heating and cooling load, we get 28%, which is very close to the, uh, is getting closer to the 39% that we see for the other sections. But no, not that we should have any one pass cooling in the first place. The number one energy hog, but maybe not the water. There are currently many different organizations, but there are several organizations that offer methods for rating and or certifying of green buildings. There are currently five primary certification organizations that we will look at today. They include the USGBC, and that's the Green Building Council, and we have BRE, BRE, which is the Building Research Establishment. GBI is the Green Building Initiative, ESADAMA. And then we have Green Star. Each of these organizations has its own unique rating and certification systems. Although they have a lot of similarities, they have some difference. USGBC uses LEED, GBI, uses green globes, Bree uses green, and Sedama has pearls, and Green Star issues green stars as their way of assessing and recognizing a project's accomplishments. The certification program of the USGBC is called LEAD. It's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It's another not-for-profit organization, but despite its name, it's not an agency of the U.S. government. It includes an expanding rating system that is evolving to include core and shell renovations, interior and residential projects, and even an operations and maintenance rating, which is very important. And this helps to optimize environmental and economic factors. It's currently the most prominent of the rating certification systems that is used, and it's at least referenced, if not used, throughout the world. The term LEED is often used generically to mean green or sustainable design. It's kind of it's like a generic term for facial tissues. As with all of the rating systems, points are available in several categories, including water, energy, innovation, materials, etc. There are four levels of LEED certification, you can get certified with a minimum of 40 points and silver 50 to 59 gold and platinum is 80 plus points. That's the top level. Since 2009, water use reduction, WEP1, 20% uh, reduction is a mandatory requirement. That means that if you don't get 20% 
savings, you will have no lead. You get no points for it, and you'll have no lead if you don't get it. So without meeting this requirement, you will not qualify for any lead points. I hope I repeated that enough times so that we understand that. But we can go beyond that. If we save a little more, 30% or more, we get some points. A 1.28 gallons per flush toilet is 20% savings over the current 1.6 baseline. Some older toilets might be 7 gallons per flush or more, but 20% is not going to get us any points. It's just going to get us into lead. We want to maximize water efficiency within the building to reduce the burden on municipal water supply wastewater systems. This part of the uh, embedded energy and water of the systems is often overlooked because that doesn't get you any points, but it affects the whole system. And it's part of the, the philosophy of green design, sustainable design. So we can use alternative on-site sources of water, such as rainwater, stormwater, gray water for non-potable applications, such as toilet flushing and urinal flushing. Maybe we could use it for cooling or irrigation. We could also get some innovative wastewater technologies. Uh, if we reduce the generation of w wastewater, and portable water demand while increasing the local aquifer charge. You can use captured rainwater or recycled gray water to flush toilets and urinals or treat 50% of wastewater on site to tertiary standards. And it gives us more points. But there are more. Innovation design credit is one point. Uh, projects that result in exceptional performance above the requirements set by LEAP could be 1.5 points. Regional credits, you can claim up to four additional points. There are six, but you could take four out of the six. They depend on your region and are based on the ge geographical location and certain um, needs that you have for that location. It's different wherever you are. You go by the zip code. We also have BREAM. It's a building research establishment environmental assessment method. It was developed and implemented by BRE. It's used in the United Kingdom, but also other countries. It's actually older than the other certificate programs. It has ratings similar to LEED, and it considers the same type of thing. Energy use, management, health and well-being, pollution, transport, land use, ecology, waters, uh, materials, the same kind of stuff, sometimes different uh, weightings and different uh, terminology. The certification levels within the BREAM system are somewhat simplistically descriptive in their titles. Uh, you have four levels, pass, good, very good, or excellent. Very self-explanatory. Their mission is to facilitate designs that result in energy efficient, healthier, and environmentally sustainable buildings. Isn't that all of our goals? Their system is designed to accomplish this through efforts, to promote credible and practical green building approaches for both residential and commercial construction. Green Club system is used in Canada and the United States. Primarily it was developed in Canada and implemented in the United States by GBI. Certification requires third party verification of compliance with its rating requirements. It's a good thing. Points are, you know, it is similar categories, and the points are uh, available for project management, site, energy, water, resource, building materials, solid waste, emissions, and other impacts, indoor environment, with a maximum of 1,000 points. 
It includes both new construction and existing buildings. And the attainable rating levels are based on the percentage of the maximum of the available 1,000 points that were verified. I guess you can't much get greener than this house. You can get between one and four green globes depending on how many points that you verified. Estadama created the, the Pearl Rating System, so called the PRS, the Arab world's first sustainability rating system. This system is a program encompassing a, uh, a system that provides a set of measurable guidelines for rating sustainability performance across Estadama's four pillars of economy, environment, society, and culture as we previously discussed. There's a lot of building going on in that area right now. The Estadama Pro Rating System aims to address the sustainability of a given development throughout its life cycle from design through construction to operation. The poor rating system provides design guidance and a set of measurable detailed requirements for rating a project's potential performance and then it requires that it's verified later to make sure that it's actually performing as intended. It is to promote sustainability and enhance living conditions in the Emirate under the Abu Dhabi Vision 2030. This is an overview of the system. The PRS covers three types of projects. It's engaged in the, the Pearl design rating, is engaged at the design phase of the project and is relevant until construction is complete. Following that, Pearl construction rating is introduced for two years after the project's completion. And then Pearl operational rating then assesses the operational performance of an existing development and takes effect for a minimum of two years after completion and when a development has reached a minimum occupancy of 80 percent. Innovative, innovating practice. These categories are weighed as you see here in the pie chart. Note that the, the biggest are precious water and resourceful energy. And my favorite sounding too. Here's a brief look at the ratings, which start at one pearl and goes up to five pearls. There are also maximum points that can be applied in each category. How about Green Star? This seems to capture uh, a feeling of Australia. They're more friendly perhaps, than other continents, or at least sometimes we get that impression. The Green Building Council of Australia launched the Green Star Environmental Rating System for buildings in 2003. Green Star rating tools help our industry to reduce the environmental impact of buildings, improve occupant health, productivity, and achieve real cost savings while showcasing innovation and sustainable building practices, much like our other efforts. Green Star uses criteria and categories similar to the other rating systems. They're all looking at water and energy and materials and people and so forth. These categories are divided into credits, each of which addresses an initiative that improves or has the potential to improve environmental performance. Points are awarded in each category for actions that demonstrate that the project has met the overall objectives of the Green Star program. After percentage score is calculated and Green Star environmental weighting factors are then applied, these environmental weighting factors vary across states and territories of Australia to reflect the diverse environmental concerns that vary across the continent. Green Star certification requires a formal process like everyone else. 
but any project can freely download and use the Green Star tools as guides to track and improve their environmental attributes. The Green Star rating is determined by comparing the overall score with the rating scale as shown here. See one star through six stars. Six stars is tough, but we're going to show you a building that has it. The building, the Green Building Council of Australia only certifies buildings that achieve a rating of four, five, or six. If you get one, two, or three, it doesn't count. This newly built office tower in Bly Street, Sydney might draw attention for its design. But below the glistening glass and steel is a pioneering black water recycling system. This piece of plant and equipment really does contribute to the sustainability initiatives that we've introduced into this building. Mm. This black water recycling plant provides 90% of the water we consume in this building and provides all of the water we need for flushing of toilets and cooling tower evaporation. That can mean up to 100,000 litres a day and that in uh, general terms can equate at peak load to an Olympic swimming pool of recycled water in just over two weeks. So that's a huge saving. You virtually have your own sewage plant in the bowels of the building. Exactly right. It's not just our own black water. This was actually the City of Sydney's first licence granted in the CBD by Sydney Water to extract sewage from the mains for use for recycling for private purposes. And you're also harvesting rainwater, aren't you? We are. We collect all of the rainwater that lands on the site. And in conjunction with this massive water supply of recycled black water, we're able to not only service the building's technical needs, but also service all of the irrigation on the site, which includes a massive living green wall we've been able to put on the southern boundary of the site. None of it uses mains water, totally recycled. And you can see this on YouTube. It's one Bly Street in Sydney. And we'll look at it again when we talk about alternative water systems. It's a wonderful example of the things that we can do. So those of you who think you can't do it will say bazinga, because obviously you can. mining sewer water. Who would have thought? Moral of the story, there's more to green than lead. Thank you. Watch for the next presentation.